slides and follow along as we go. Today we're going to be talking about a better user experience with the WordPress customizer. My name is Andrew Taylor. I am an agency and community engineer at Pantheon. We do WordPress and Drupal hosting. Um, and so my job is to help agencies and developers on our platform and also give back to the community contributing back to open source code and coming giving talks and attending awesome conferences like this. I'm at a, a, at a Taylor ME on GitHub and Twitter. Um, so you can follow along there and I'll tweet out a link to the slides at the end. Or you can shoot me an email, Andrew at Pantheon.io if you ever want to chat about anything. So some of the things we're going to be going over today, we're going to start with the settings API. This is the original WordPress interface to update options for themes and plugins. Then we're going to talk about the customizer, kind of how that's different, get into some changes to the customizer in 4.5, which came out pretty recently, and then 4.6, which is just around the corner, and then look at the customizer in the future, and at the end, we'll talk a little bit about configuration so, Customizer versus Settings API, for those of you that don't know what they are, um, they both sort of do the same thing. They allow users to change settings either within a theme or a plugin that gets saved to the database, but they do so in very different ways. Um, both of them are saving options in the WordPress database, but Settings API is kind of a standard form, whereas the Customizer is a single page web application with a live preview, and it's more of a modern web app that your users are going to be used to. So starting with the settings API, this is where WordPress originally introduced um, an interface for users to update settings. This was back in 2.7 in 2008. So it's been around for quite a while. It's had some upgrades over the years, like a color picker and things. But for the most part, it stayed the same. If you've been working with WordPress for a long time, it's probably what you're used to seeing. Um, and it typically looks something like this. So it's a page in the WordPress dashboard where you can go in um, and it's, if you're working with theme options, if you ever use a premium theme, you've probably seen something similar, tabs and tabs of options which, with a bunch of settings. And so actually what we're going to be looking at today um, is I created an example site. We'll have the code up, a link at the end so you can go download this. But this is what a standard settings page looks like for a theme. Um, I just have a site title here that we can edit, the color of that title, the size, and then a number of grid items. But just from looking at the settings page, we can't really tell what these are going to affect on the site. In order to do that, the user actually has to come in, um, pull up the WordPress front end of the site, come in here, and if I were to, you know, change the color of the site title, like maybe a gray, and crank up the number of grid items, then I have to come back to the front end, do a refresh to see what that looks like, and that gray is kind of washed out, I can't really see it, so now I have to go back to the settings API and update things. Um, and so those are some of the disadvantages of the settings API, is the user can't see their changes until they're published, until they're live on the website, which means if something's wrong, it's not the way they like it, they're going back and forth, but there's still visitors coming to the site, and they're seeing those settings um, in a state that you don't want them to see them in. And often, we looked at like that settings page I showed you was different from the tabs and tabs of options, is every theme or plugin that creates a settings page handles their own HTML and CSS, so they all look a little bit different. It's not a cohesive user experience within WordPress because you have this kind of one-off page that's different from the rest of the WordPress experience. And then users are admins. When a user goes in and looks at, you know, 10 tabs with multiple settings under each tab, they can be really confusing. Um, so definitely something we want to avoid. I don't want to totally bash the settings API. It's super great for things that don't impact the front end of the site. A great example is advanced custom fields. Um, if you want to go in and add items that are going to be meta boxes, they're more for administrators, they're all staying within the WordPress dashboard, then the Settings API is a great tool for that. So now we're going to dive into the Customizer. Um, so we've talked a little bit about the Customizer, that's a single page application. 
It's been around since WordPress 3.4 in 2012. Um, I'm really surprised when I talk about the customizer with people and they really don't have a ton of experience with it because it's been around for a long time and it's had a lot of upgrades. We've got live widget previews in 3.9, panels and additional control types in 4.0, navigation menus were added in 4.3. Um, and so kind of talk about where is the customizer? Well, even if you haven't created any custom items or added settings for your theme or your plugin to the customizer, if you're a developer, your users have probably seen it. The customizer is extensively used in WordPress 4. It's in all of the default themes. Um, and it's something that people have seen before. And it's not going to be a surprise. And if you're a developer, themes are required to use the customizer API if you're submitting your theme to WordPress.org. Um, this is super important. If you go get a premium theme somewhere else, you don't have to follow the rules. You can still kind of use the settings API if you want. But if you're doing an official theme submission to WordPress.org, then you need to use the customizer. So some of the advantages of the customizer um, are that we have that consistent user interface because it's using the same customizer controls throughout everything, whether it's the default WordPress settings or your theme or plugin settings. It's one consistent user experience. Users have the live preview. And then also, the built-in controls for the customizer are a little bit cleaner code. You just write some PHP and the customizer is actually going to create all the HTML inputs and everything for you, so you're not having to code those as a developer. Um, so we're actually going to take a look at that. These are those same settings that we just looked at in the settings API, but this time in the customizer. And so if we come in um, and I want to change the color, I can actually see that in the live preview before I click save and publish. So if you go view the front end of the site, it's not actually going to be ready yet until we hit that save and publish. Um, same thing with the number of grid items. If I want to see what that looked like, I go, well, five is kind of weird because I have this gap here. I don't like that. I'm going to go back to three. Um, before I save and publish. So that was the example we're looking at. Again, I'll have some links to that code at the end. And you might have noticed that when I was over here in the customizer, um, we're doing a whole page reload when something changes. This is the original implementation of the customizer um, doing that full page reload. And it's still better than the settings API because your users get that live preview. But as a web application, your users expect it to be instant. Web applications shouldn't be slow and kind of sluggish, waiting for that full page reload. And the customizer preview is no exception. Um, so we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. The other cool thing you can do with the customizer is contextual controls. So here we have these number of grid items. But if I click into an inner page, that control disappears that grid is only on the home page, you're only showing the um, items to your user that are relevant to the part of the site they're previewing. So if I go back to the home page, that control pops back up. So you can have these contextual controls, maybe just for the home page, for a certain template, for different things you're working on. So rather than those tabs and tabs of options, unlike you might have in the settings API, you just have to guess which settings are going to affect which template. You can actually customize that experience. Um, and going back to the full page reload being a little bit slow, Customizer actually has an additional transport called post message that allows you to make new JavaScript to make updates in the preview in real time. Um, so we can take a look at that as well. If we come in here, I can go in and change the color, and we can see that changing the color is instant. This is more what you would expect from a single page application. Um, as I adjust the font size, we're going to see that happen, um, and that's with JavaScript. There are some downsides to this. Actually, this field here um, for the site title text has a filter applied to it, and you have no idea um, what items are going to be applied to that filter, how that value is going to be changed, so it's really tough to recreate in JavaScript. In this case, if we change this, um, and I hit save and publish, and I were to actually go view the front end of the site, then we can see that it's all caps, and that's because a filter is being applied to that value. But as a developer, um, leaving a filter available, I have no idea what people are going to do to it, 
so it's tough to recreate that in JavaScript. So post message is really great for simple changes that you can do in JavaScript, like color or font size, um, but they're tough for those more complex things. Um, that, like that list of grid items is actually doing a WP query, and there's pretty much no way you want to recreate that in JavaScript. It's going to be a pain and a mess. So in WordPress 4.5, um, latest release, Weston Ruder, the customizer lead, actually said what the customizer needs is a middle ground between refreshing the entire preview, that full page reload, and applying changes um, exclusively with JavaScript. And that's what we got with Selective Refresh in 4.5. If you've used a customizer and you haven't used Selective Refresh yet, I highly encourage you to check it out. You actually write some PHP, and tell WordPress um, which callback functions happen when a setting is changed, and it will actually make the AJAX call and go get the real value. Um, so if we come in and we take a look at that, this has um, that partial refresh applied, and I can see here, as I'm changing the value, that just the title is being updated, and that filter is being applied, and we're getting that capital value. And also, instead of the full page refresh, now with my grid, um, I can change that, and it's going to go run the new WP query, fetch those grid items, and apply them to the page. And this is also great, because as a developer, I don't have to write any of that JavaScript, any of that AJAX, all those calls are being handled by the customizer for you, um, which is really awesome. So again, this solves having to recreate items in JavaScript that you did in PHP. That violates the dry principle. Um, don't repeat yourself in development. And it allows you to have more complex changes previewed um, and previewed accurately. As I said before, if you have a filter available, in your plugin, you have no idea what other developers are going to do with that filter, how they're going to extend your plugin. And this allows you to get the actual values returned. So enabling selective refresh is really easy. Um, this is an example from widgets. It's seriously one line of code if your widget is PHP. You just drop it in, and then it will actually, WordPress will handle everything for you. The customizer will take care of it. If you use some JavaScript, there are JavaScript callbacks as well. Um, if we go back in here, when I update the grid, I'm actually using masonry on this grid for the layout. So I've just hooked into every time this partial gets refreshed, I'm going to apply masonry again and make sure that that layout looks okay. You can use this for a lot more than widgets. Um, that grid is actually a template part. So we're just going to fetch that template part anytime a setting is changed that's related to that template part. So if you have a template part for like social media buttons or things like that, and people update um, those settings, you can go in and refresh those selectively as well. So as I said before, you can use both of these. Use post message, that kind of instant JavaScript quick change or items that are like a text color or a font size, really quick values that maybe you would normally edit with jQuery or something. And then use selective refresh for those mo more complex changes, something that has a filter applied, a WP query attached to it, that little bit deeper logic. Another great thing that came out in WordPress 4.5 is previewed in site responsiveness. So these little buttons down here in the far corner um, actually allow your users to preview how the site would look at different breakpoints. By default, there's three. There's a desktop, kind of a tablet, and a mobile. Um, but you can actually hook in to these. There's a filter available for you. If your theme uses different breakpoints, um, maybe you want to do like a landscape and a portrait for a uh, tablet or things like that, you can go ahead and add more breakpoints or customize those so they actually match the breakpoints in your CSS. And there is also JavaScript um, methods available. So again, every time that gets changed, I'm refreshing that masonry grid. If you have interactive JavaScript items on your page, you can update those when that screen size changes. So now I want to talk a little bit about 4.6 changes. Uh, 4.6 isn't out yet, but it's in beta 2 right now. And so it's really close. We're going to have it pretty soon. And these are things that you can download um, the beta and start playing around with now. So 
4.6 for the customizer includes setting validation. This is really great because currently, if you're sanitizing fields in the customizer, um, if that field is not up to your sanitization, it'll basically just get stripped out. And the user has no error message and no idea what they did, what they did wrong. So 4.6 includes client-side validation in the customizer, um, which we can take a look at here. And so I have WordCamp rocks, and if I were to change this to WordPress rocks, oh, capital P. <laughs> so you can have a nice little message in there, um, or if I did like WordCamp rocks, I'm checking and I'm validating that I don't want it to be all cats because we don't want to scream at anyone. Um, and so if you hit save and publish, it's actually not going to show up on the front end until all of these validation checks pass. So that's really nice and it's a great way um, for you to give your users some feedback. So if you have a field that's maybe supposed to be like a, a little short description and you can limit it to 140 characters, you can make fields required, you can do those things so people are filling out the information they need to fill out in the correct way and they get feedback on what they're doing. Um, so that's coming to 4.6. Looking at the roadmap for the customizer a little bit beyond that, there's a notification area. Currently in WordPress, if the WP content uploads folder is not writable and you change something um, like a background image or a header logo in the customizer, it just fails silently and doesn't work, which is a pretty bad user experience. So this is in uh, development in core and it's a milestone for a future release, but just a general notification area. This might be used for like a roll-up of, hey, if you have four fields that didn't pass validation individually, we're going to tell you if there's four things you need to go fix. Or we're going to tell you that your WP content uploads folder is not writable. Or if there's a PHP error, you know, making those Ajax calls and doing that selective refresh, um, then we can tell you about that, hey, maybe one of your plugins you need to check into. Customizer transactions. This is really exciting. Um, this is still kind of in the early phases. But having the customizer be split out into separate transactions would be really great because settings could be uh, theoretically drafted and then returned to later, similar like you do with WordPress posts. Um, we saw awesome.com up here in the session before. If they could go in and maybe have someone who has lower level permissions configure things and have somebody who needs to review and approve them before they actually go live. Um, so you can submit settings pending review. And then with everything being split out into separate transactions and those being saved, you kind of get a built-in revision history. If you want to go back and see like, oh, you know, we made this change and now our conversion rate's down. Well, let's roll back. What did we have before that didn't quite take our SEO the way this is about? Um, Customize Snapshots is a featured plugin. You can find it um, on the WordPress.org directory, and it implements a lot of these things. It's really great. It kind of takes the Save and Publish button in the Customizer and splits it in two. So you have Save and then Publish. That way you can save and come back to things later. What's really exciting with this, though, is it attaches a unique ID to each Customizer state it saves. And with that ID, you can actually preview the site without the customizer frame, and this will update REST API endpoints as well. And this is really exciting if you're doing a decoupled application. If you have React or Angular or something on the front end, you could register your settings in the customizer, and if people update them, you can actually go check it out with those updated endpoints and how it's going to look on your decoupled app on the front end, um, which is really exciting. And so we can kind of take a look at that real quick. So you see here those buttons are split into two. Um, so if I change this from WordCamp rocks to WordPress rocks, and maybe I change the color, and I hit save, um, I can actually go check out the WordPress dashboard. And there is a new area for snapshots here. And I can see that I have a draft now. 
and it shows me um, what's changed, what's in that draft, and then I can come back and re-edit it in the customizer later. And so we have that UUID um, I was talking about earlier. And so if we take this, we can actually append it um, just to the regular URL of the site without the customizer, and we can actually preview that on the front end. So this is just a standard um, PHP front end, but again, if you're using a deep coupled app or something, you can actually preview what those updates are going to look like in the native front end of the site, which is really cool. And then going along with this, another feature plugin, um, something that's looking forward to in the future, is customizer browser history. What this will do is it will actually, when you're navigating around in the customizer, we saw earlier, I went from the home page to an inside page. If I were to save a snapshot and someone else went back to it, they would go to the home page. So if you have those contextual settings, maybe they're related to a certain page template or something, um, you want to be able to go back and preview the same template or the same post or the same screen that the other person was looking at or that you were looking at um, previously. And so adding in browser history will allow us to do that and save the state of not just the customizer controls, but also the preview window and where you where you are looking at things. Um, content authorship, this is, you know, pretty far down the roadmap, still in uh, kind of early phases. But there's also um, a featured plugin for this, and the idea is that there's some things in WordPress currently there's a preview in WordPress. You can, if you're drafting something um, or making changes, you can go preview them. But if you update a featured image in a post right now, it's live as soon as you change that featured image, even before you hit save and publish. So um, it's, preview is great if you're updating content or meta fields, but there's certain things within WordPress. Um, if you change a page template and you hit preview, you're not actually able to see that preview within the standard WordPress preview when you're drafting a post. So having content be editable in the customizer would be awesome because then you can see as you change page templates, as you make updates, um, as you're changing different things, what those are actually going to look like on the site as you're drafting your content. So again, follow along with that featured plugin, um, play around with it, leave feedback. It's still an ongoing process, so the more people we can get at testing and leaving comments and leaving your feedback, we can get those items that are created. The last thing I want to talk about is configuration in code. This isn't related directly to the customizer, but both the customizer and the settings API save data into the database. Um, so your theme options, all your plugin settings are saved in the WordPress database, and configuration in code actually allows you to, um, there's a great plugin called WPCFM, where you can export items from the WP options table as bundles to JSON files and then re-import those in a different environment. So if you have a staging environment and a live website, and you go in and you make like you know a dozen configuration changes on your staging site, you send it off to your client for approval. A week later they come back and say, yeah, that looks great. Then what? You normally have to log into the live website, remember what you changed, and go back and click through those same dozen settings that you did a week ago that you may or may not get right. If you use this plugin and export them to JSON, then you can um, deploy that JSON out with your code, the same way you deploy your PHP files and stuff, log back in and do an import, and bring it back from that JSON into the database. So it's also really great because exporting your configuration into JSON allows you to keep it in version control, um, which is awesome because then you have that Git or that subversion history. You can see which developers changed things and why, along with some of the comments and things in there. And then you can kind of do the reverse. If the client makes updates on the live site, um, they add new content, they do things, you can pull that back down to your staging environment export their changes to JSON and make a, a code commit on their behalf with those changes to so you know exactly what's going on. Um, I have some resources in here. I have a ton of links. Um, the example repository, kind of this theme options where we started with the settings API, this 
four theme options with the site title and the color and everything is up on GitHub. Um, if you go find a Taylor and me, I actually did a workshop with the customizer where we started with the settings API and went all the way through um, the updated customizer implementation where we're using selective refresh and things like that. So you can follow along with that if you want to get hands-on and do some coding examples. Or you can also just go check out the repository if you want to download it and play around with the customizer as well. There are different Git branches for the different states. So for the settings API, for the full page reload, um, for the 4.4, the standard kind of post message, and then going into 4.5 and 4.6 and some of the things we talked about there. A ton of resource links. Again, I'll have a link to the slides at the end. Um, so go grab the slides, hop in here. Go read some of these articles. Um, the WordPress Developer Handbook has a great, great section on the customizer. If you go to make.wordpress.org core, there's articles being posted about the customizer pretty frequently. Um, you can find the customizer tag, follow along, subscribe there, and keep up to date with, with what's going on. And then also look at popular plugins. Like there's a link here um, when Jetpack implemented selective refresh in their widgets. That pull request is a great place for you to go and see how they're actually doing it and get the nitty gritty of the code and see what's going on. Um, and then also the WordPress default themes use the customizer extensively. So if you build a premium theme or you're building a custom theme for a client and you want to start using the customizer, go look at the WordPress default themes. Um, check out how they're doing it and maybe apply some of that to your work as well. So again, my name is Andrew. A. Taylor and me on GitHub and Twitter, um, or you can shoot me an email if you have questions or come find me after. But here's a link to the slides, and we'll go ahead and open it up to some Q&A. Uh, you did a demonstration of some the validation of certain yep. things. Could you extend that to, say, define a minimum and maximum pixel size for a local image? Yeah, so the question was, with the uh, client side validation, if we could extend that to a minimum and maximum size of a logo? And the answer is yes. Um, the way I do that is I create two fields um, a number field for the minimum, a number field for the maximum, and then you can just validate on those. If the minimum gets above a certain number for a warning, if the maximum gets below a certain number for a warning, or whatever you want to do there. Um, so when you register those settings validations, it's actually just PHP that you're doing the validation. Um, so you get a string coming in with the input. So in the case of the color picker, if that was like a normal text field and you're asking for a hex code, then you can just do some regular expressions and check that it's actually a valid hex code. Um, if it's a number, you can just do basic less than, greater than, those sorts of things. Um, with the capital P, I was just searching if there was WordPress with the lowercase p, and if there was, I'm throwing back an error. So it's really simple. Any sort of validation you can do with PHP is going to get translated.
the settings there as well. Um, and that's assuming that your theme uses a customizer. If you preview a theme that's using the old settings API, then you're probably going to be out of luck. So, any other questions? Sorry, I'm having a tough time hearing. Do you mind coming up to the mic?